wife and I decided to go for a screaming hot walk. As you can see, I'm sweating my balls off, people. It is 30 degrees out here in the shade and about 80 to 95% humidity. So if you're not sweating out here today, uh, you're dead. You, you're not alive. But we're at the uh, University Ad Grounds. So we're gonna take a little peek and I'm gonna show you guys as well. Here we go. All right, so this is the main entrance to the Shenzhen University Ad Center. The University Ad was uh, in 2011. I was here then, not here here, but I was in Shenzhen at the time. The great big building straight ahead is the main outdoor football soccer stadium. This one is a smaller stadium or group of stadiums that I'm sure they play tennis, badminton, and other indoor sports in. The wife's gonna jog up the stairs because she's insane. I'm gonna take it nice and easy. Funky ass building, so eh? There she is. We did pass a couple basketball courts, but oh, the breeze is nice. There is a McDonald's over there for all you McDonald's athletes. Hoisting them Big Macs. No thanks. I'm not sure what they're building here. If I had to guess, I'd say apartment buildings. Look at all this funky ass glass. Oh, hey. Duh. This is the basketball stadium. So when they have their, um, you know, they have the NBA in America. Here in China, they have the CBA. So when the CBA is in town, this is the sports facilities they would play at. And a lot of the CBA players do actually make it into the NBA. What's that? Uh, if they let you in, <laughs> maybe on a motorcycle. That's the basketball arena, hun. And then that's the football arena. And because I saw inside the basketball signs. And up there, that's the mountain I was on. That's higher than Lianhua Mountain. Five kilometers it took me to go up and down and back. So yes, that's definitely the soccer arena, football, if you're of the European persuasion. And if you look way, way, way over there behind that crane, way up there, that's that tippy top of that mountain I took the video from. I'm not sure if I posted that yet, but I probably did. Of my super stellar stairs from Hell Walk. We'll do that one again. I'm gonna do that one on a regular basis, but uh, that's a once a weeker baby. Ooh, that was a long way up. And if you're so inclined as to enjoy watching construction sites, and some people do, there are a lot of live cam sites out there that just focus on construction sites. You can watch, watch these uh, hardworking in this kind of weather. I tell you, these are very hardworking people. Um, there ain't no air conditioning here. They're all wearing long sleeve shirts and safety vests. So they are hot. And they don't have the comforts that we do where at the end of the day they get to go home to their air-conditioned apartments and uh, relax. They do live in, 99% uh, of the construction workers in China do live in company-provided group homes, group housing. Um, they're a little more than uh, stacked together um, shipping containers, really. However, I do notice nowadays that a lot more of them do have air conditioners on top, which is fantastic news for these guys, because uh, guys and gals, uh, you would be surprised, Canadians and Americans, just how many women work 
in these construction sites now. When I first lived in China, that was not the case. Um, it was the vast majority of the workers were men. Now, I would say an equal number of these hard laboring people are women. Um, so there you go, equality. Uh, the best man for the job is whoever can do the goddamn job. Let's keep going down here a bit. All right, I'm gonna take a little break and we'll come back and show you more. We're on the other side of the building now. And as you can see, there's a couple. I'm really surprised that these are empty right now. There's only two dudes playing basketball here. Again, there's no charge to get into these things. They are just provided by the government. And of course, another public toilet. Something you don't see enough of, sadly, in Canada. Uh, some of the parks and places I've been to, the public toilets are downright frightening. So that's very cool. They even got handicapped toilets there. We're on our third kilometer now. And now here, this building up above here, I do believe are the swimming pools. Should you feel so inclined as to go for a little swimmy poo. We'll go take a peeky poo. Oh, this is badminton courts inside here. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. There is a swimming area too. I just don't know where it is. But yeah, this is the, uh, what would this be? The south entrance <clears throat> to the University Ad Center. And there very well could be a swimming pool in here. And take a look again here, people. Mixed zone access. Safety note, note safety. Emergency shelter. Shenzhen University Ad Center. Center Plaza. Lakeside stage. There's a lakeside over there that's undergoing um, uh, construction right now, unfortunately. I'd love to go walk along that lake. It looks beautiful. But the thing I want to point out is there's English everywhere. Yeah. If you want to go play badminton. But there's, there's English signs everywhere. This is China. We are not in a tourist zone, a tourist area. In fact, we're many, many, many kilometers away from tourist areas. And yet, the signs all have English on them. All right, we're gonna go into the mixed zone access and see what we got. During natural disasters, these places all act as emergency shelters as well. Oh, hey, look at this. What have we got going on in here? Neat. Got more bathrooms over here. Oh, and air conditioning. Woohoo! Air conditioning. Let's go take a peek. Water fountains. Oh, nice. Indoor badminton courts in the air conditioning, people. Oh, I'm sure you have to pay. That's nice. I mean, it's one thing, they do love their badminton here, but it's uh, pretty freaking hot outside, especially in the summertime. Here we have indoor badminton courts, indoor ping pong tables. So a person come, could come here and practice or just play forever. This is in our neighborhood too, by the way, so. The missus and I could uh, sneak over here during the daytime when all the people are at work. I'm sure in the evenings these places fill up pretty quickly because it's air conditioned. Ah. Let's see, I'm just gonna keep walking this way. <laughs> the wife's going to find out how much it costs to, to buy a pass, but uh, I'm gonna see what we got going on. Is this interesting? Just another entrance down here. Oh, this, perhaps this is the competitive area. Ah, yes, it is. They've got a metal detectors and the uh, baggage scanners. So when people come for competitions, they can check them out. But uh, 
This, this in itself is pretty damn impressive. The wife is thrilled. She's been wanting to do some exercise and play some badminton, but uh, there aren't really many facilities right near our home. Whereas this is beautiful. This is really, really nice. Beautiful ping pong tables. Very, very nice condition. Very, very nice badminton nets over there. I suspect the wife is buying a membership right now. Go girl. Oh, nice shot. Badminton is actually a very athletic game. A lot of people in Canada don't really believe that it is, but it absolutely is a very, very athletic game if you play it properly. Look at how huge this place is. No basketball courts, just badminton as far as I could see. Very, very nice surface in here. Amazing. I smell a little bit of cigarette smoke. Hopefully people aren't smoking cigarettes in here. Could be that it's coming in from outdoors too. Okay, let's go catch up with the missus. See what she's got going on. In China, your phone is your life these days. It's your major payment method for food, products, transportation, literally everything that you do. So this again is one of those power bank units where you scan the barcode, one of the power banks will pop out, and then you've got power on the go. And then you can return it to any one of these stands after you're done and pay a small fee. And that way you don't have to uh, worry about running out of juice when you're on the go. And you don't have to carry a power bank with you. They even do provide um, potable water, drinking water for people here, which is really, really nice. You'd rarely see, you see these things are bone dry. You'd rarely see these things used. Most people in China do prefer boiled water. But what a fantastic little center. That is truly, truly amazing. I think the wife and I are gonna be playing some basketball or some badminton here for sure. We just gotta buy ourselves a couple rackets, a couple birdies or shuttlecocks if you prefer and then we'll be back a uh, great way to burn off some steam and again in the air conditioning it's lovely and then we're only a short walk away from home so cool how cool that's how you say it in chinese all right well that was worth the walk right there and if you don't want to go take a squatteroo in the hot public toilet, you can go inside and use the nice cool air conditioned one. That's a very popular little public, uh, little, I don't know, there's so many people, they're not really playing basketball, they're just all kind of shooting. All right. And now we're working our way home. I tell you, I'm building up an appetite. I know the wifey ain't eating tonight, but I might have to order me some delicious, delicious noodles. I tell you what. All right. Again, we're walking along this beautiful, beautiful landscaping along the sidewalk here. As you can see, we've got flowers. It smells amazing. We've got overhanging trees. Um, one thing I do want to show you as well is the bus stop. Now the bus stops don't have a lot of seats, but they do provide some seats so that the elderly and the um, in pain, less, uh, less mobile type of people can actually have a seat, but they provide these massive covered bus stops. How many covered bus stops do you remember seeing in London? This is not a trick question, I'll give you the answer. Fuck all, almost none. It's just amazing. Yet here, every bus stop has a huge covered area so that when it's raining, you can get out of the rain. Uh, won't help you if it's snowing because if it's snowing in South China, you got much bigger problems. It's so cool. The biggest, the biggest thing you have to look out for on the sidewalks these days in China 
is all these little electric bicycles. They are everywhere. And when I say everywhere, I mean freaking everywhere. And some regular bicycles too. All right, signing off.